A few days ago, I was scrolling through YouTube and I found this video by Ignace Alea where he makes this really cool telekinesis effect using Cinema 4D and After Effects. And I wanted to see if I could make something like that just using the free version of DaVinci Resolve. Here's what I came up with. Here's how I made it. Obviously, first I had to film my footage, so I grabbed my phone and recorded this shot of my sister pretending to lift these bricks with her mind and then throwing them at the camera. Big thanks to my sister for letting me film her. She actually has a YouTube channel, which I will link here. You should definitely check that out. All right, so here I'm inside of Fusion. So first off, I'm gonna need a 3D brick, and this is actually pretty easy. I can bring down a shape 3D, set the shape to a cube, and I can unlock the width, height, and depth, and bring the height and depth down until I have more of a brick shape. Then for the texture, I went outside and took a picture of an actual brick. I could just plug that into the shape. Now by default, it's too shiny. So under the material, I'm gonna go to the specular and just bring that all the way down. And then since we're gonna be making a lot of these, I'm gonna bring down the subdivisions all the way down. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a camera to the scene. Then I'm just gonna plug in my media one to the camera. Then I'm just gonna position my camera so that it matches my footage. So now I need to animate my bricks, and I don't really want to do this by hand. I want some way to automate that flowy organic motion, and particles are actually really good at doing that. So let's start there. I'm going to drag down a P emitter and a P renderer over here. In the P emitter, I'm going to go into the region and change the region to rectangle. Then I'm going to bring the X rotation to 90. So now my particles will be spawning flat on the floor here. I'm going to bring up the size to 0.5 by 0.5 then just drag it over to the side. Now I want more bricks than this, so I'm going to bring the number up to 50. But if I hit play, particles are spawning on each frame. I don't want bricks to suddenly start appearing. So on the first frame, I'm going to put a keyframe on the number, then go forward one frame, and bring it down to zero. I'm also going to bring the lifespan all the way up to the shot, just so that they don't disappear. Now I'm going to copy and paste this P emitter, and that'll automatically make a P merge. Then this one, I'm just going to bring it over to the other side, since I want two stacks of bricks. So I need some way to make these float up to one point, and we can do that using the P point force. So if I bring it up and hit play, you can see that the particles are slowly moving towards that point, but it's moving way too slow for me. I'm gonna bring the strength up to 50. Now that's better, but it's a little bit too strong. So I'm gonna bring the power down almost to one. That's a little better, but it's still too strong. So I'm gonna bring up the limit force to 0.9. That's looking better. But you can see it looks really artificial because they're all like moving in a line. So we can break that up a little bit by adding a P turbulence. I'm just going to bring this X, Y, and Z strength all the way. So to add some weight to it, I'm going to add a P friction node. The default settings look really good for me. So in the original video, the bricks are all kind of gathering around this one sphere. So we can replicate that by using a P bounce node. Under the region, I'm going to change it to sphere and then bring the size up to around 0.2, I think. So now if I bring this up, you can see that they're all bouncing off of the sphere. But we want the sphere to be in the exact same place as the P-point force. So what we can do is on the P-point force, I can click this little pin right here. So now if I go to the P-bounce, I can see the controls for the P-point force. So on the translation, I'm going to hit equals on the X, Y, and Z. So that brings up this. So if I drag out from this little cross, I can connect it to the X offset. So now these values are linked, so they'll be the same. So I can do that same with the Y and the Z. So now if I move around the point force, the P-bounce will move with it. Now I can unpin the point force. So on the P-bounce, I'm gonna bring down the elasticity to zero and bring the variance up a little bit. Now that's looking really cool, like they're swirling around this one sphere. So now what I can do is I can merge the render over the camera. So now I can see the particles over the footage. So I want the P-point force to start down here where she's gathering them. So now I'm gonna keyframe the offset and then go a little bit forward and then move it up as she's lifting them. So now it looks like she's raising them up with her powers. Now I can also see that they're coming into the point way too soon. They should only start moving as she moves her hands down like this. So that starts at around frame 15. So I'm gonna put a keyframe on the strength and then go maybe five frames back and set it to zero. So now they'll be on the ground, but then when she starts moving, they'll head into that one point. The problem is they're still moving before that. That's because of the P turbulence. So what we can do is go to frame 15 and put a keyframe on the probability in the conditions tab, then go back to frame 10 and bring that all the way down. So the probability is basically the chance of the P turbulence affecting it. So if I bring it down to zero, there's a 0% chance it'll affect it. At 100, there's a 100% chance it'll go. So they start still and then they fly up to where she's summoning them. Now you can also see that she starts pushing them away. So what I want to do at this point is add a P directional force, bring the direction to zero and the direction Z to 90. So I'm going to put a keyframe on the strength 
set to zero. And then when she pushes out her arms, I'm gonna bring it up to five. So it'll look like she's shooting them out. Now if we play that, you can see they're moving up into a ball, going up, and then shooting out. Now that's looking pretty cool. Now we can delete that Merge 3D, that was just for that step. So now we need to take these particles and give their motion to this brick right here. How do we do that? It's actually pretty easy. We can use a node called Replicate 3D. So basically what it does, it'll take an input, which is our particles here, and then replace it with another input, which will be our bricks. So if we look at that, we can see the bricks are way too big. So I'm gonna bring down the scale to something that makes a little bit more sense. You can also see as I move around, they're kind of glitching in and out of each other. That's because the tops of them are in the exact same place. So what we can do is go into the jitter tab and just bring the Y jitter up just a little bit so they're not on top of each other. We can also bring up the Y rotation jitter just so that they're not all facing the same way. So if we hit play, you can see that they all point the same way and that doesn't look great. So what we can do is before they start moving, put a keyframe on the X, Y, and Z rotation jitter, and then go to the end of the shot and just bring them up to something pretty high. Now if things aren't running back smoothly for you, you can unplug the material and that should make it run a lot faster. So now we have a pile of 3D bricks moving up with the exact motion of our particles. That's pretty cool. So now we can merge that over our camera and add some lighting to match our scene. For my shot, I'm going to add a directional light. Now at this point, we can take the median out of our camera. So with the directional light, the light is coming from one direction. So all you have to do is change the rotation of the light to change where the light is coming from. I'm going to match the angle of my light. Since it's a pretty cloudy day, I'm going to add an ambient light and bring that up a little bit. So now let's render this out. So I'm going to add a render 3D and plug the merge into that. Now change the type to OpenGL. That just makes it run a little faster on my computer. Then I'm going to enable lighting. Then the output channels, I'm going to click on Z and vector. Then in the image tab, I'm going to change the depth to float 16. So first, I'm going to add some ambient occlusion and drag the camera into that. So if I bring this to the viewer, it turns red. I just have to change the type to sphere and that'll fix that. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Then I'm just going to bring down the kernel radius until I start seeing some ambient occlusion. That looks pretty nice. Then I can change the output mode to color. Then I'm going to add some vector motion blur. Add some motion blur to it. So now I'm going to connect this to the media out. So I want to render this with alpha. And if you've watched this channel before, you know rendering with alpha has never worked for me. But that was in DaVinci Resolve 16. When I upgraded to 18, that was fixed. So I just gave it a name and location, then changed the format to QuickTime, changed the codec to DNHR, and then clicked export with alpha. Then added that to the render queue and render it. So I'm also going to render a shadow pass. So what I'm going to do is bring down a shape 3D, plug that into the merge, I'm going to keep it as a plane, then change the rotation to negative 90. For some reason, if you put it on 90, the shadows won't work. I'm not sure why that is, but just put it on negative 90. So right now, we don't see any shadows. That's because the shadows aren't turned on. So what I want to do is click on this arrow here. So right now, you can see that lights are turned on, but shadows aren't. So if I click on shadows, you can see the shadows right here. Since my shot was filmed on a cloudy day, this is too sharp for me. So in the directional light, I'm going to go to shadows, softness, and change it to constant then just bring it up all the way. So in the render 3D, I can click shadows. So I wanna isolate the shadows so that I can control them when compositing. So how I can do that is first, delete the ambient occlusion since we won't need that. Then I'm gonna select my render and motion blur, copy it and paste it up here and bring my merge into that. So in this renderer, I'm gonna uncheck shadows. Then I'm gonna merge that over this one and change the apply mode to difference. So now our shadow is white right here but we want it to be black. So what I can do is add an invert color. So now everything is white except for our shadow. So you may notice that the bricks are turning blue. This is just because of the difference mode. What we can do to fix that is add a brightness contrast and bring down the saturation. So now I can render this out. All right, so now let's add this to our footage. So here I have my footage, my rendered out bricks, and my shadow pass. So first in my footage, I film this handheld. So I'm gonna to need to track it. I'm going to go into the operation and change it to match move. Then I can drag my bricks into that. Now they move along with my footage. So in order to make the bricks look a little bit more magical, I'm going to bring down a fast noise and then plug the bricks into the alpha input of that. So now they're only where the bricks are. So I'm going to bring up the scale to something big like 40, change the type to discontinuous and inverted. I'm going to bring up the detail all the way. And then on the color, I'm going to change it to gradient. Then on the white point, I want to bring it to red. Then I'm going to bring the brightness down and bring up the seethe rate a little bit. Now I'm going to add a glow to it. You can use any glow you want. I'm going to use X Glow. This is a plugin, but it's free on Reactor, but a soft glow would work just fine. Just going to merge that on top of the bricks and change the apply mode to screen. Now let's add our shadows to this. So I want to take our tracker, copy it, paste it over here. 
Now since the background is white in this one, I'm going to bring a white background into this. Change the color to white. And then plug the shadows into that. So if I had kept it at black, you would start seeing some edges. So I'm going to merge this over our other tracker and then change the type to multiply. So now if I play around with the blend of that, you can see we just have the shadows. Then I went through and made the bricks look like they were part of the scene, adding grain and blur and stuff like that to make it look like it was actually shot through this camera. Then to complete the shot, I added some Scarlet Witch magic to her hands, which you can learn how to do in this video right here. 